And our technical producer, Brian Fisher, along for the final game on day two. This is the second gold medal qualifying game, or the gold medal semifinal to be more exact. One of these two teams will take on the team from St. Lambert in Saturday's gold medal game. And we've got the Hélène Garneau from Quebec City taking on Douglas College from British Columbia. So again, one of these two teams looking to get into the gold medal game. Garneau Ilan wearing the black with white and green kits going right to left on your screen. And the Douglas College Royals wearing the all whites with the black trim going left to right. A real blessing this time with the uniforms. Not nearly as hard to see as the, the, the gold on white and the white on, and the neon <laughs> on white that we had uh, yesterday in the Dallas C Garneau game this time yesterday evening. Starting keeper for Douglas College is Alexa Gazzola. And in goal for Garneau is numero un, Anne-Marie Laroche. Or en français, she would be the gardien. Garneau coming down with that ball now. Langlois, she looked to make a good run, but it's sent all the way back. Laroche. We'll stop it there, and she'll move it forward for Routier. Ball comes down there now to Jarou Lapointe. Goes back again. Both teams just trying to get a feel here early on. Will it be an all-Quebec final? Or will we have a British Columbia team representing the West Coast on Saturday? We'll know that answer in a little over 90 minutes from now. Let's give a recap on how both these teams got here. Douglas had a late win yesterday against the Ooks, I believe, of Nate in AIT. That's the Northern Alberta Institute Technology. That one coming around the 72nd minute, I believe. That's how they punched their ticket to the semifinal. And Garneau had the late night game yesterday evening, and they put seven past Dallas C, the host Rams, on this field this time last night. So a uh, little bit of higher scoring Garneau, Garneau side, but uh, don't count out this Douglas team. They played a hard-fought game against the Ukes, who earlier today we saw get another impressive win under their belt. Ball controlled there by Giroux Lepoint. She moves it up along the line. Gets it right back, a little give and go with Langlois in there as well, and Langlois took that off the shoulder. He takes it down now, and they'll just go back to the back line. You'll see teams do this quite often when they need to reorganize. That's just They'll just go to the back and then work it up. Kind of a regrouping strategy. Over on that far side, ball moved ahead in there looking for it was Letelier. Into the middle. Nice step around there by Mello. And keep an eye on Eve Mello. She can be dangerous. She can control the offense, and from time to time, she can decide to load up that right leg and hammer the ball toward the goal. So you never know what you're going to get from Malo if you're a defender. Absolutely not. She's an excellent center defensive midfielder, can move into the attacking third if need be. Very strong presence on the ball, and as you saw, a shot there not too far off the goal, you know, testing the patience of Douglas early and their, their grit in this uh matchup just under or just around five minutes or under five minutes rather gone in the first half ball at midfield Douglas rushing onto it and they'll come over here to the near side they'll survey now and try to move forward lead ball there looking up for Pettinen Pettinen making a run down to the right side being watched by Jeru Lapointe Pettinen works it in little back heel there Nifty little move right in front of the goal. Looks like that'll be called for a corner. I believe that was Hamilton with the clever move. Uh, the back heel there. An excellent ball to get that whole play started by Captain Sam Kell, who's actually going to head over to the corner flag to take this set piece for Douglas. So one dance partner already decided. 
for the gold medal game. And the second, you'll know shortly, and that wall was headed. Well struck off of the head, but over top of the goal. He's got a little bit under it. Excellent delivery, there, though, there from Cal. And excellent uh, work to win that free header at the back post. Just didn't get quite the contact she wanted on the noggin. Just the first few minutes here, five and a half minutes gone by. So we are just underway from Mainland Common here in Halifax, home of Soccer Nova Scotia. Dow AC and the University of King's College co-hosting this national event. Giroux Lapointe moves it up. Comes back now into the midfield area where Kell has it. Sam Kell had a great game yesterday for Douglas. Nice battle for it over there as that was Dollywar working hard to maintain possession of that ball. And that's the egg giving the foul there. It's not a terrible place to give a free <laughs> kick, but Douglas already moving their bodies into the 18-yard box, hoping to get a good early goal here off a set piece. Some good distance on that ball, and it's headed away. A couple of players trying to move that ball forward for Douglas, but it comes back outside, and Thandy has to handle it there. Here come the Elan now. Through ball. Trying to make a run onto it, but the goalkeeper, Gazzola, calmly comes out and picks it up. Both teams, kind of a little feeling out process here. At least that's kind of the sense you get watching them. We learned Garneau last night is very offensive-minded and incredibly technical. In my opinion, they're the most technical team at this tournament, our, our head coach actually suggested that we all come out and watch them so we can learn how to play proper technical football. Um, Douglas, we did see quite a bit of technical ability from them also. Good triangle passing in the middle that they used yesterday against Nate. So really uh, two technical teams matching up. I would give the edge to Garneau on the, just on the technical side of things. But if there is a margin there uh, of, of advantage there, it is razor, razor thin. Um, I'd say that this team from, from the British Columbian uh, province is going to be very interested in trying to get an early goal, particularly off set pieces. Here comes Douglas now, Pettinen. She has moments where she can be exceptionally dangerous. 24 in white, keep an eye on her, Martina Pettinen. Pettinen, rookie player out of Burnaby, B.C. And the play whistle down over on that far side. Eight minutes have gone by here. First half of this championship semifinal. Ball now onto the Douglas side of the field, but they'll control there from their back line. Douglas actually controlling the majority of possession here, which I find a little bit surprising. Uh, I think a part of that could be Garneau just being more direct in their offense, not wanting to possess so much as they do attack. Douglas, I think, wary of the beast that Garneau is. Don't want to give the ball up too easily in possession. So we're trying to hold on to it as long as they can while they probe out the Garneau defense. Letelier pushed that ball to the right. Trying to work in now, crossing it into the middle. In there looking for some garbage as Langwa cleared away, but they'll possess it still inside that 18-yard box, and then it's cleared away out of danger. There's just a little hiccup there from the Douglas defense, one player. Heady, trying to head it clear, actually headed in the back of her teammate. No harm, no foul there as they do get the ball ultimately clear and they'll send it all the way back to the Garneau goalkeeper who's going to restart possession for her team here. And Garneau slowly now will work the ball upfield. Now they go back to the keeper, almost a dangerous play there as it was a Douglas forward up lurking around. Maybe an ill-advised back pass to the keeper, but no harm, no foul. Here's a nice through ball. Langwa on the feet from Mello. In deep, tries to get it out front. Couple of players there. There's a shot on goal, and it goes up over high. But again, it was Mello started that play with the nice lead ball for Langwa. Langwa took it in deep, fed it out front. And then a couple of good chances, and the best chances so far for either side as Garneau comes close. 
That's, I mean, that's an incredibly dangerous ball play back in there. I think it's important that the the shot was actually the third not third attempt, but almost the third option. Two other people in better position missed that ball as it came across. The uh, shot only came from a clearance, and here's a good chance nearly there by Douglas Keeper having to do some uh, sweeper keeper work coming way out of the box to make that clearance. Ten minutes gone already. No super clean chances, but there has been some action on both ends of the field, no doubt about it. Nil nil game here in this gold medal semifinal. St. Lambert waiting for an opponent. So they're anxiously watching this one to see who they are going to play. Ball at midfield, a bit of a scramble for it as a couple of players come together, and then it's Garneau who get it back. Again, they'll just calmly go back to their keeper, Ladosh. She'll settle it there and move it over on this near side for Desellier. Very good high press here by Douglas. They're really forcing Garneau to move the ball backwards or at least laterally, really preventing any, or not any, but uh, simple forward motion by this Garneau offense. And even there, when they try to play a ball down the line, they block it. Douglas does and forces a throw in. Here comes Giroux Lapointe. That ball went by Mello. And again, back to the keeper, and marie Laroche. Hamilton thought for a split second about trying to run onto that and then just realized there was no way she was going to beat it to the keeper. And there is Hamilton. Trying to cause a little havoc up there. Douglas now will take it. They'll work it back, and that's going to go out over the line, so it'll be a throw-in for Garneau on the Douglas side of the field. A bit of an unforced error there. Maybe just got a little too, a little too excited with the pass, waited a little heavy and off, off target. Forced a throw, but it doesn't seem like it's going to come too much. Garneau forced to play back already. Turning with that ball is Metevier. Ferdic Metevier. Gives it off. And Garneau will send it down the field, down into the corner. Foot race there. A couple of players come together. Good battle for it down in that far corner. Looks like it's going to stay. Garneau ball. So a throw down in this uh, <coughs> right corner for them. And they're going to control it somewhat easily in the 18-yard box. There's a dangerous-looking ball into the middle. Langlois was lurking around trying to get something. And it's sent high over the goal. Uh, that, that ball didn't really have any threat to it right when it came off her foot. She was leaning back. Uh, never really had any chance to get in the goal. Particularly striking off the ball, you have to make sure you get your head and your body way over the ball and over your hips as well, or else it's just going to fly backwards with a lot of backspin. Alexa Gazzola with the goal kick. Mello heads it back in toward the other end for the Garno side. Not a whole lot of flow from either side yet on the offensive side of things. See if Sam Kell can change that. Getting it forward for Hamilton. Hamilton making a dangerous looking run here. Takes it down deep. Good challenge on that far corner. And the ball won neatly there by the Galno defender taking it away from Hamilton. Back the other way now. Letelier. Letelier thought that Langlois might make a run. Douglas will take it and just play it over to their keeper. Gazzola. Long ball up for Pettinen. Pettinen had it taken away. And here comes Melo. Melo has got Langwa to the left. Decides to go to the other side, working it toward the middle. Bounces over toward the line. Langwa is there. Langwa will just dish off to Giroux Lapointe. Giroux Lapointe, working it now. Gets it to Melo once again. Melo. Right foots that ball down toward the far corner, and it's going to go out of play. You have to say this about this Garneau squad is that they're always very aware of their surroundings. We have seen some hiccups where they think, or, you know, there's some confusion as to whether players are making a through ball run, whether they want the ball played to feet, but they're always looking head on a swivel to make sure they know where their teammates are on the field. And that's something that, that can't be really, you know, just taught through through you know a, a lesson or something it, it's repetition it's time based 
Um, there's no real natural ability that comes to help with that. A lot of it is just spending time on the field with your teammate and learning their specific you know, details and, and characteristics as a team as a whole. And I think Garneau definitely exemplifies that this evening. Mello gives it up to the teammate, and then it comes over here for Giroud Lapointe. Up to Langwa. Langwa just gives it off, and she does a little you take it, I got it, give and go with her teammate, and now goes a little further to the back line. Stepping up with it is Desel. Desel moves it forward now, and she'll try to make a run down the left side. Giroud Lapointe couldn't get it to her. Now here's Hamilton with some speed and pace. Hamilton dangerous. Can she get a shot away? She does for the corner. Just misses. But a great run there by the dangerous Michaela Hamilton. It, it's very clear that they're going to try, that, that Douglas is going to try and play through Hamilton on the counterattack. She's been sitting very high against this, you know, defensive line, typically on the last defender. There she's ran a little bit of a flag route right out to the right hand of the flank, right side of the flank and tried to bury that ball into the top left-hand corner. It's an incredibly hard finish to make. Uh, she definitely did her best there and was very, very close to getting it in. Kel intercepts that clearing or that goal kick. Tried to work it forward. Now here's a chance the other way with some speed. Garneau coming in. There's a shot going down to the ground to take that low ball into the midsection was the keeper for Douglas Gazzola. And I believe that may have been Langlois who broke away and had that chance. So just in the early stages here through the first 16 plus minutes, sorry, that wasn't Langlois, it was 16. Audrey Genois. Genois with the great chance. And on the other side, just before it was Michaela Hamilton, but certainly for Douglas, Michaela Hamilton has been the most dangerous player offensively on the field. Well, she, has, she has a great engine on her, and she can really run it back lines effectively. She's also very strong on the ball, pretty much what you want in number nine. I think we saw her deployed a little bit more on the flank yesterday. I think they wanted a little bit more strength going through the middle, and with the service that Kel can give her at, at this uh, you know, center attacking mid or number 10 position, there's a lot that, uh, that Douglas can hope to get out of that partnership. Well, Hamilton in her third year, hails from Surrey as a number of these players do on Douglas. And here's a chance now. They tried to get that ball through. Langwa again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And they got it to Langwa on the second attempt. And a good job defensively catching up from behind by Nisha Samara. A lot of weapons coming into the box right now for Genoa here. Ergreno here, the, particularly Malo, uh, who saw number two in the dark blue jersey with the neon uh, numbering. Big ball, you can come in on the, the back post, you know, very powerful in the air. They're going to play it short, though. Well, we saw St. Lambert do this earlier. That was right in front of the goal and didn't catch the number, but almost right off the face of the Douglas defender, sacrificing the head to clear the ball away. Didn't even phase the player who took there. Again, it didn't catch the number, but just took that right off the, almost appeared to be right in the nose, but I guess it was higher up on the forehead. As the player on Douglas really didn't even shrug. It looks like Douglas will uh, be spared too much more defensive duties here. There's a foul by Garneau that'll give him a free kick out of the back. Right up along the line, and it goes out of play right in front of Nisha Samra. The ball will bounce down and be taken by the keeper, Gazzola. Both teams have had a couple of opportunities. One team really hasn't asserted themselves too much onto the other. Pettinen. Trying to go down the right line. Coming over to clear it away was Giroud Lapointe. Excellent slide tackle by Giroud Lapointe. Just reading when, they, when the touch was too heavy, making the interventive play, forcing a throw in. Hamilton, nice move around one defender, tried to chip it by the second. Gets held up there, stays with it though. Good effort by Hamilton. 
Trying to spin around, couldn't get it, but it comes back outside where it's controlled there by Wessa. That's why you have tall goal pieces that right now. Big 50-50 ball there in the air. No, there's a little bit of noise coming from the, the, the grandstand off to our right where the Grinot uh, fans have found themselves, or Garneau fans have found themselves seated. It's a boisterous contingent of fans on hand here on a Thursday evening in Halifax. It's good to see that they traveled all the way out here. I think they said it was a 12-hour 12 12-hour 12 bus ride. No, no petty affair that. One of the coaches from St. Lambert was kind of joking when he heard me say that uh, Galno had talked about their 12-hour bus ride. He said, no, no, no. He goes, they're more like nine hours. We're a 12. We're a 12. <laughs> I'm sure that they are just licking their chops <laughs> hoping for another all-Quebec affair in the final. Uh, definitely a, a, a chance for that tonight, but not if Douglas will have anything to say about it. The West Coast representatives. Still, still no goal here, but they have been knocking at the door, both teams. That play is whistled down, so 21 minutes and counting have come off the clock here in this first half. Still nothing on the scoreboard from goal-wise, but as you said, James, both teams have had a couple of chances. Mello to the back line now. They'll move it up on the left. Giroux Le Point. Long lead ball there. And again, trying to run onto it was Thandy. Almost got there, but just a little too far, and Gazzola will grab it and hold on. Starting to be a really physical battle back there between the two center backs and the striker for Garneau. Definitely one to watch going forward. She's got a lot of pace. And I'd say the same thing is true for Hamilton. She's been testing the entirety of the Garneau back line. Yeah, Hamilton definitely has been causing some problems up front for Garneau. The Douglas forward wearing number two. To Elan, moving it up. Far side now. They have to regroup a little. They'll work it back. Hamilton keeping a close eye on things there. She jogs after it now for Douglas. Hamilton forcing the issue, so the Galno side will work it up to the other side. Ball comes down onto the foot of Jérôme Le Point. She was challenged momentarily there by Pettinen. Quick throw in. Comes back to Jalou à point. Steps around Pattenen. Ball through there. Little chip back to Letelier. Letelier tries to get it forward for Langlois. Just a little too far. Langlois really has got a set of jets on her. Just takes off as soon as the through ball gets hit. Deceivingly quick on the left-hand wing. Very effective when she gets the ball out on the flank. Langlois in her second year out of Quebec City. Malo back to Jolie Le Point. Tried to get it up to the middle there. There's Latelier once again. Latelier feeds it over into the middle. Back to Malo. Far side now. A little back and forth. Back up to Malo. She goes upfield and then cuts to one side and then brings it over to Jaroux, or excuse me, uh, Jaroux Le Point on the near side. Nothing happening there, so Kel clears it away for Douglas. Went over the head of Hamilton. Both sides looking for any kind of advantage here. Lead ball forward, Hamilton puts her back to the defender. Tried to slide it across. I think she caught Pettenden out of the corner of her eye making a run. Blocked down, though, and here's Mello. Little left-footed lead there. Langlois takes it smartly. Langlois now cuts toward the middle. Gets a little jog on now and then dumps it back. Little dump-off ball for Mello. Mello sees an opening, takes the shot. She'll do that when she sees the opportunity. She put that one wide, but again, Mello, sometimes when you least expect it, she'll spy the opening, and she'll just kind of rear back and fire. I mean, that's kind of the advantage that this Garneau team has in their, their formation setup is they can attack from the wings very well. We talked about Lingois, who can get up and down the flanks well and put in crosses or dial on herself. And just, just when the defense is, you know, having to push up to deal with the strikers, the wingers, the attacking midfielders, 
here comes Malo who can hit a ball from 35 yards. And when you're, you're midfield and defense is so focused on you know, the, the attacking players, the center defensive mid coming out and hitting the ball like that catches you completely off guard. The ball driven downfield by Gill. The Elan will control, though. Giroud Lepoint once again gets it up to Langlois. Langlois couldn't receive it cleanly. They'll regroup. Little chip off there by Genois. Over for Melo once again. Far side pass. Move back toward the middle. Letelier just chips it back. Giroud Lepoint once more. She's had the ball in her foot quite a bit here. In the first 25 plus minutes has number seven in the black and green. Jalou Lapointe seems, everything seems to be kind of flowing through her right now as well as number two, Eve Mello. Seems that Gondo's growing into this game. Douglas really needs to make sure that they can keep possession, stay on top of there, or, or try and force Gondo back into the defensive half. The last thing you want from a team like Gondo is for them to get a, 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 you know, a monster share of possession and really control the pace of this game. Douglas has to make sure that they're doing their, their part as well and dictating how this game is played. Yeah, you can kind of get the sense the last few minutes that the field might be tilting just a little bit toward the Douglas end as Garneau seems to be coming on and asserting themselves just a little. That being said, we have seen that the counterattacking capabilities of Douglas are very effective. Hamilton, when she gets a head full of steam, there's not a whole lot that can stop her, at least not one player alone. Sometimes and often takes a group of defenders just to dis, uh, you know, dispossess her. That ball goes to no one in particular and out of play. It'll be thrown in quickly by Douglas. Hamilton is there, gets spun around, good battle with her opposite number two, Mello. Here's Hamilton once again going high to head that ball down, but Langwa steps in and just wins that ball aggressively. Look at Langwa now making a run, feeds it over into the middle. Good job there by Langwa. They'll feed it back now. It went behind Mello, but she gets it right back. Eve Mello from distance again. And that bounced right at the feet of the keeper, Gazola, and she had to be sharp. Not to be handcuffed by that long, long ball off the foot of Mello. I wish I could hit a ball like that. No spin, low, you know, just a knuckle ball. That's from 30, 35 yards out. You know, it would have gone straight in, maybe even hit the back of the net without bouncing. Real talented shot there from Eve Mello. This long ball forward could create some problems. Douglas up there looking for it. The Royals trying to get something toward the goal. Comes to Hamilton. Steps around the defender. Hamilton looked dangerous for a moment, but it's cleared away. And just to go back to Eve Mello, we've seen just how steady and strong she has been. And you talk about that rocket of a leg that she has to launch those shots from distance. Just a first-year player out of Boucherville, Quebec. So my goodness, imagine what a couple of years of seasoning at the college level is going to do for Mello. She's good now. She'll be downright scary in her third and fourth year. Over into the middle. Ooh, and the Royals almost had a glorious opportunity inside the box, but it's cleared away. And it looks like all of a sudden Garneau's having some communication problems, figuring out exactly what their attack strategy is. Langwa now will try to remedy that and gets it to Letelier over into the middle. We're waiting for it. Was Genois. That ball put in just wide of the goal. They're not afraid to shoot from distance. That's one of the things that can kind of stifle teams that they you know they only feel comfortable shooting in and around the six yard box. You're in and around the eighteen yard box. This Garneau team has shown that they're not afraid to shoot from thirty five yards and that can catch a goalkeeper off guard. And if you have the talent to hit the shot, by all means drill it. Langlois steps into that one. Kell moves it up there for Douglas, but it comes down onto the foot of Metevier. And the Elan will control once again. Metevier calmly steps between a couple of defenders, works the ball to the middle of the pitch to Mello. Mello over to the other side. Will come over there and meet her teammate, get the ball back and move it up ahead. That pass through is stopped by Wessa. And Douglas will look to move it out, but 
The Elan will have none of it trying to keep that ball in. General no player falls down and the ball goes out over the line as we pass the half hour mark of this first half. Still no score. Nil, nil. And again, just a reminder, I know we've got a long way to go, but should this game end in a tie, no overtime, straight to penalty kicks. And there will be a, uh, a late whistle call there. I think they were thinking of giving Garneau the advantage. Lingla, I'm sorry, uh, was uh, fouled there on the run. They thought that she might be able to retain possession, but it turned out that Douglas was going to win the ball, so the referee smart to whistle there. Calls it back for a free kick, and a little conversation being had here between number two, Mallow, and number seven, Drew LaPointe, as though the strategy is going to be drawing this one up, maybe. Deciding who's going to run quarterback. Still talking it over. So Mello is right there over the ball, standing just behind her is Jeru LaPointe. The four-person wall set up just inside the line of that 18-yard box. So Mello lines up. She can fire it right into that wall. Follows up her own shot and gets it back. That must have stung on a cool evening to have that shot from Mello go right into the thigh. I tell you, I was out kicking the ball at halftime, and it hurts just to put your foot through it. I can't imagine what it would be like to get hit with a shot like that. So the four-person wall in that particular case did the job, blocked that low shot from Mello on the free kick attempt. Douglas now will look to turn it right back around. Petten it over on that far side. Hamilton was hoping that Petten could win the ball and get it to her, but no luck having it there. And Mello once again. Malo seems just as intent this evening as rifling that ball from distance as she was in the game we saw her play yesterday. She definitely wants to dictate play, and she's doing a good job of it so far. A good response there by the Douglas goalkeeper, recognizing that the deflection had come off the shot and being quick off her line to retrieve the ball. Pettinen up challenging for that ball for Douglas. Now it's over on the far side. Wedding. Time marches on here in this first half. 33rd minute now we play into. Still no score. Who will break the ice here? There's been a couple of dangerous looking plays on both sides, but nothing by either keeper. La Roche for Galneau and Gazzola for Douglas. Coming up to challenge there was Genois. But Hamilton will win it. And behind the play, a Garneau player down to the ground. Now Malo just got clipped there. She'll foul was called, so they'll give, it, they'll give a free kick here to Garneau. And already they're pushing the lines up early. Jeru Lapointe along the line. Langwa gives it back to her. Here's Jeru Lapointe. Sees an opening, curls it in. No problem though for Alexa Gazzola. And she just looked that ball right into her mitts. You can see the keeper there, Gazzola, kind of shaking out the legs a bit. Probably, probably just trying to get the circulation going. It's chilly out there. Away with it now is Letelier. Trying to work it up there for Genois. Letelier once again puts it forward. Couple of players converge on that ball. They'll chase it down into that far corner. Excellent work there by the Douglas defenders. Two of them converging on the ball, making sure it didn't go out for a corner and keeping it in, actually dispossessing. It will go all the way back to the Garneau goalkeeper, but still excellent work on the defense. Marosh moves it up to Malo. And she just calmly leaves it there for her teammate. Now they'll work it back toward the middle. And now to the near side. Jaru Le Point. Takes that shot. That goes off the back and shoulder of Hamilton. Michaela shakes that off and chases the ball down once again, but it's Mello going to her back line. Lead pass there off the foot of Routier. 
Now it's down on that far side again, deep into Douglas territory. Right down into the corner, it will go out. A throw in, very deep now for Garneau, down in the Douglas side of the field. Unofficially, less than 10 minutes to go here in quarter number one. Really, anybody's me, ball game. One. Oh, absolutely. You don't really get a feeling that one team is really asserting their dominance or will over the other. And even if Garneau, I think, I think it's fair to say, based on what we've seen, has had the majority of possession and maybe even majority of chances. Without that opening goal, there's really not anything to say, you know, who's in the driver's seat. And Malo's going to take another one here, that one dipping. I thought it was going to go over from the big go, but well hit. He's going to drop right in under that crossbar. Good well, attentiveness by the goalkeeper. Well, if uh, Eve Malo ever decides that she wants to try the other kind of football, I think she'd be one heck of a field goal kicker. She has no problem lining it up from 35, 45 yards and just letting it go. Looks like she could probably take a hit or deal one as well. In possession now, this is Letelier. Garneau working that ball deep on the far side once again. They'll come back with it. Trying to set something up, see if they can spring somebody free. Quite often in soccer, you'll see a team go backwards to move ahead. Well, it's, it's resetting the, uh, you know, your offense. It's like getting the, circulating the ball back out to your point guard in basketball to restart the motion of your offense. You know, sometimes it is helpful to go all the way back to the goalkeepers so you can see the whole field, recognize where you can exploit space, and kind of just swing the ball, you know, back and forth along the, like, like Arno is doing now. Just swing it along the back line or the midfield line, make the defense run, see if somebody will be lazy and maybe not make cover their mark, in which case you can, uh, you know, Play the ball into space or play the ball with feet for someone to run onto. Good job moments ago by Fandy yeah. stepping in and heading that ball away from the Garneau side as they tried to work it in. Here's Mello going in against a couple of defenders, but she's turned aside. And the Royals will clear the ball out. But it's sent right back in. Bounces off a defender. Now it comes to Langwa. Langwa steps around Wessa. Look at Langwa make the run, tries to get the shot away. And it bounces dangerously through the front of the goal. And it was interesting there. Alexa Gozola was almost beyond calm as she watched that ball just kind of bounce and roll right in front of her and off to the side. Ling was just so quick with the ball at her feet. It's just, just darty back and forth, back and forth, right, left, right, left. Really allows her to slice into spaces around the 18-yard box. And she can either go on her own or pick a pass to a partner. Here's a shot from a sharp angle. That's nowhere near the goal. Uh, if, if, if you're going to shoot from that, you gotta really got to whip it and curl it. Near post is almost impossible. You know, I think that the original plan there was to, and it, and it was uh, LaPointe, I believe, Garneau LaPointe, or Giroux LaPointe, pardon me, was going to try and whip it into that back post. Didn't quite get the connection. To the, the chant of Allez Garneau, Go Garneau, coming up from the Garneau Elan faithful here. A good, boisterous crowd. They are really whooping it up down there. A real, true soccer crowd. Here's Pettinen. Can she get away? She's onside. Pettinen. What a chance. What a save by LaRoche. And that is how quickly this game can change. We're talking about Garneau. They have all this possession. Garneau, they're making all these chances. That, go that breakaway there could have easily resulted in a goal. And just like that, it's Garneau on the back foot. Douglas with a 1-0 lead. Very aggressive keeping by Anne-Marie LaRoche to come out and challenge Pettinen, and she made the save. There's another chance. What a save! Bang, bang, play. Big save LaRoche at one end, and Alexa Gazzola says, I can do it too. Just a reflex save, almost instinctual. Throws out that big left paw, makes the block with the middle of her arm. Excellent save there by Gazzola. Excellent ball movement by uh, Garneau, to be honest. There was a bit of a mishit cross by Malo. Good follow-up to get a shot off there. Great goaltending at both ends. Different styles of save, but both equally effective and both keeping this game scoreless. My goodness, and Marie Laroche at one end. And then right back the other side, Alexa Gazzola with the answer. 
top quality goaltending here at the 2017 CCAA Women's Soccer Nationals. What else would you expect? Kel gets taken down unceremoniously there by Audrey Genois. Play carries right on. That ball is lofted down toward the goal. A little bit easier pick up this time for Ladosh as that ball gently rolls to her and then she sends it forward. Petnan always there to apply pressure along with Kel and Hamilton not too far away from her. This Douglas press has been effective on occasions to force Garneau into making mistakes. Routier gets that ball up ahead now. Garneau Petnan in on the pressure once again. Garneau will work it to the middle and then now over on the side for Jaloux Lapoin who gets it up to Langlois. Goes back to her mate. Nice job there stepping into it by Sam Kell to intercept that ball. Sends it down into the corner. Pettinen tries to make a run onto it, but it'll be DeSalle who gets there first. If I was DeSalle, I would have just shielded that out of bounds. And she just pulled a little cheeky skill move out of her back pocket, wheeled it around real quick, and took it the other way. Hamilton goes to Samara. Or Samara, excuse me. And it'll be Galno once again. 42nd minute of play here in this exciting first half of the gold medal semifinal. One of these teams will play the St. Lambert Cavaliers in Saturday's gold medal national championship final. Of course, we'll have it for you right here on our live stream coverage. Garneau working the far side. Pettinen ever present watching things for Douglas. Ball comes back into the middle once again. Garneau trying to set it up, working forward for Langlois, but it's Samra who was there. Now Mello. Call me to DeSalle who moves it to the middle. Through ball there, blocked down at the midfield stripe. A little bit of that ping-pongy back and forth that you see from time to time. Play in that middle third once again. Nice little run there by Samra. Samra, excellent little play fake. Fakes the pass, fools the defender, and then goes on her own. That's the type of simple move that can really make a difference when you're in one v one Here's Langlois in the middle, trying to find the open player. I believe that's number 16, Jeanlois. Up there, now it's Langlois again. Langlois, a little bit of space. Can she use it? And a good job by the defender of shutting down that chance, but a dangerous looking move there as Langlois broke in from the left. Well, it was a, it was an odd situation where Jeannot was on the, the left-hand side and two defenders went to pick her up and, and kind of force her into a corner, and nobody picked up Langlois. And all Jeannot had to do was thread the ball through the two defenders, and Langlois is, is pretty, not in on goal, but, but you know, in a dangerous area in the 18-yard box. That's the type of, of, of mental Laps you can't have on defense. You gotta know where every player is at every time and to get in a match like this where you know one goal can really be the meaning, it can really be the uh, difference between a, a gold medal and a bronze medal. That or no medal at all. The corner kick handled aggressively by the keeper Gazola as she came out through a crowd and just double fisted it away. And this is the stage of the half now where in you when you're in a scoreless game, you want to avoid the late goals. It would be Kind of a backbreaker at this point should you give up a marker with less than a couple of minutes to go in the half. So we'll see if maybe there's a little bit of cautious play, but you definitely don't want to give up one of those backbreaking late goals when you're in a tie game. I say all the time in NCAA basketball, it's a little different here because Canadian basketball uses the quarter system. But the first five minutes and the last five minutes of every, of every half really dictate who will win the game. Some coaches believe that, and I think that could also be the case here. You know, who stays tuned in? on the last five minutes and the first five minutes of each half can really have a big impact on who walks away with the W this evening. Nope, or hasn't, there haven't been a whole lot of stoppages for injury or, or otherwise, so it will be interesting to see how much added time there may be, and we'll find out shortly as we're into now 44, 22 sec 44 minutes, 22 seconds, and counting. There's a Douglas player that I swear has been tying her shoe for two minutes. I saw her back at the 18-yard box tying it, and now at half, <laughs> half field, it's like, you know, get the bunny loops going, and then the, whole, the ball moves, you got to move again. and Tough to get all that sorted out. Kel standing over this, though. 
Look at the air underneath that. This could be dangerous. And coming out was LaRoche to punch it away. Good job there and great goalkeeping on both sides of the pitch. It's a goaltending battle here between LaRoche and Gazzola. It'll be one minute of stoppage time we're seeing from the fourth official. Excellent ball in by Sam Kell. We know we learned yesterday just how dangerous she can be from dead ball positions. Uh, deadly, you know, excellent delivery on free kicks and corners. She can really provide a lot of offense for her team, even though it's from a dead ball position. So we didn't see how much added time was coming. So it is one minute indeed. Okay, thank you very much for that, James. Getting the hand signal from my broadcast partner. That ball kicked forward. So just 60 seconds added on here. Not a whole lot of time. Here's Mello. Mello tried to get that ball forward. Stepping into it now is Wessa. Nice move by Kell. Can she get it to Pettinen? Trying to find her. And it goes a little askew, and it'll go down into the far side. As you can definitely see that Kell had the head up and saw 24 in white. Heading down the field, she tried to get it to Pettinen, but just couldn't connect. And there you have the referee blowing the whistle to signify the end of the first half of play. A very exciting and intense half in this gold medal semifinal game, but we are still nil-nil after one half. And James, uh, before we slide off for the half, your thoughts on a pretty entertaining first first half of play. Absolutely. I think we're looking at two teams that are refusing to settle. No one is giving up on second chance balls. No one is giving up on, you know, defensive marking. Everyone wants that gold medal. Everyone wants a chance to, you know, meet with uh, the, the, the Cavaliers uh, from St. Lambert later on this week, and uh, neither team is going to go away. I'd be incredibly surprised if we see one of these teams just fade after halftime. Coaches, I'm sure, are going to have their remarks prepared uh, for the for the halftime speech, see if they can fire up their troops to give them the edge going into the second half. But really, these last two games have been great soccer. Well, the St. Lambert Cavaliers, they are awaiting the winner of this one, and whoever it is, that's who will play St. Lam uh, Lambert in the gold medal final on Saturday. One half in the books, one half left to come. Will we see penalty kicks to decide that second team in the gold medal final? Well, it could very well be, but if you want to find out, come back in about 15 minutes' time for the second half. We'll step aside, take a break. You're watching the 2017 CCAA Women's National Soccer Championship, and we've got a good one cooking. Nil-nil, Garneau and Douglas. We'll be back. I'm Kristen Berthelsen. I'm a third year student at the University of King's College and I am a center back on the King's women's soccer team. The team is sort of just like King's in that it's a really wonderful community to be, to be a part of. All the girls are really um, supportive of each other and we have a lot of fun together which is great. We play well on the field but we're also friends off the field which I think is really important. Josh Gester, I'm studying Earth Sciences and play center back. Um, I played soccer all my life coming up here. And the King's team is pretty strong. They have a pretty good athletic program. Uh, awesome. Awesome. I'm a third year student at the University of King's College and I am a center back on the King's women's soccer team. The team is sort of just like King's in that it's a really wonderful community to be, to be a part of. All the girls are really um, supportive of each other and we have a lot of fun together which is great. We play well on the field but we're also friends off the field which I think is really important. Josh Gester, I'm studying Earth Sciences and play center back. Um, I played soccer all 
like come out here. And the King's team is pretty strong. They have pretty good athletics for I'm a third year student at the University of King's College and I'm a center back on the King's women's soccer team. The team is sort of just like King's in that it's a really wonderful community to be a part of. All the girls are really um, supportive of each other and we have a lot of fun together which is great. We play well on the field but we're also friends off the field which I think is really important. Josh Kester, I'm studying Earth Sciences and play center back. Um, I played soccer all my life coming up here. And the King's team is pretty strong. They have pretty good athletics for
Well, we are 45 minutes and perhaps some penalty kicks away from deciding the second team to go to the gold medal final on Saturday. Welcome back. Second half action just underway between the Cégep garneau Elan and the Douglas College Royals. A scoreless first half. Both teams had moments where they controlled the play. Both goaltenders played exceptionally well. Both goaltenders making back-to-back -back glorious saves. LaRoche at one end, and then moments later, it was Gazzola. And through it all, James, we've got a scoreless game. It certainly hasn't been for lack of trying. Plenty of shots for both teams. It looks like Douglas is going to be flagged on the offside there. Just to remind you, Garneau is sporting the dark blue with neon green lettering going from left to right on the screen. Douglas, the white kit with the black lettering or numbering rather, going right to left. It really has been just a neck and neck battle all the way through this one. Shots for both teams. Possession maybe slightly in favor of Garneau. Actually, I would say definitely in favor of Garneau. But uh, Douglas definitely taking their chances when they have them. Some excellent offensive performances by Sam Kell and Michaela Hamilton uh, early on in the, in the first half to give some chances for the Douglas Royals. Well, we'll see who will be the player potentially that will rise above and set themselves apart from the rest of the pack and perhaps have that moment of glory. Certainly able people on both sides that could make that happen. But certainly if you focus in, you would might want to look at the number twos for both teams. Eve Mello, who wears number two for Galno, can be very dangerous and has shown a propensity to put the long ball on goal. And at the other side for Douglas, you mentioned her, Michaela Hamilton has shown flashes where she can break the game open with her speed. So will it be one of the number twos who break through here or will it be somebody else? That's the beauty of sport. and That's why we're glad you're with us. Just quickly there, Jeru Lapointe has uh, been taking the sideline. She's got hit in the face of the ball. Uh, put her hands to her face real quick. That ball is very cold. It's uh, it's very hard as well. Just kicking around with it at halftime. Uh, didn't really want to go off. I don't think there's any fear of her being concussed, but New policy is, I think, with the referees, any time a player goes to clutching their head or face, uh, they have to be go, have to be seen to the sideline, take a quick little test to make sure that they're actually okay. She'll be joining us again shortly, it looks like. Bluin into the game now. Daphne Bluin. Nice run here. Bluin. That's a, that's a beautiful move. My favorite, actually. It's the, the bow and arrow. You play the ball on one side of the defender and run on the other side. Sometimes the defender doesn't know who to pick up, the ball or the player, and you can just go right around them. Ball into the middle. Mello was there. But it's sent well down the field. And after it is Jeru Lapointe. She will get there and corral it. Petnan watching her. Ball moved up, taken off the head of Wessa. Mello was there challenging for it. Garneau will come down with the ball. College St. Lambert. The Cavaliers already through. On the strength of their 3-1 victory over Grand Prairie in our earlier game here. And one of these two teams will face St. Lambert. I think Garneau would uh, very much relish or uh, St. Lambert very much relish a chance to have another crack at Garneau. As I understand, don't hold me to this, but Garneau won the Quebec Conference in a 2-1 in a penalty win over uh, St. Lambert. St. Lambert advancing to playoffs on a wild card draw. And uh, definitely, a, I'd say, not bad blood, but a rivalry between the two Quebec squads. Well, certainly that would be a very good storyline to follow should that be the case but certainly Douglas will have a lot to say about that here's a chance now trying to break through with Bluin they couldn't feed her the ball comes back 
Near side now for Marquis. Betty Lawrence Marquis. Douglas working that ball up. Nice little touch there. Getting it over was Wedding. And it goes out over the line. So will it be an all Quebec CCAA women's final or will it be basically East versus West? Douglas, of course, playing out of British Columbia. I hope you wouldn't you wouldn't mind if I said Middle East versus West. <laughs> we, 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 we like to consider ourselves in the ACAA the East, but I suppose for the for the sake of the story we could we could give Quebec its its fair share. Ooh, celebrations nearly erupting on the uh, sidelines there. I confess that I thought that might have been as well, but the ball finally was going to the side netting on the outside rather than the inside. Well, we had some Douglas fans just below our broadcast position here actually jump into the air initially and then realizing that the ball was to the outside of the goal, but seeing that ball come in from the angle and the twine kind of moving, it hard to tell at first, but... No goal and we carry on. Here comes Galneau once again. Nice moves there as Bluin comes down the field. She's turned aside. Back with it now is Gill. Nicely underway here in the second half. Still nil-nil. Garneau really trying to pressure Douglas in their back third. Keep possession in the offensive, ha in the offensive uh, end for them. Douglas is kind of struggling to break the press there as Garneau again is, is in possession here. Garneau now with some speed, going down to the left side, trying to cross it in. And a couple of players were there looking for it, but it goes out of play. I believe that was Ling La again on the far left side. She did an excellent job on in the first half on our side near the bus here. Has a lot of pace, very, very quick, and can definitely make a difference when she gets up to top speed. Corner kick opportunity now here for the Elan. Straight toward the front of the goal and punched away. There's a rebound chance. Save made. How did that stay out? Oh, my goodness. I don't know if it was Gazzola that got a piece of it, but it seemed that that ball was destined for the back of the goal. Several players from Galdo were there. A scramble in front, and somehow the ball stayed out. Seems wow. you've seen that a couple times today, a couple times in this match, actually. Perhaps, perhaps a bullet dodged there by the uh, Douglas Royals. Garneau really knocking on the door with that shot. Holy moly. A goaltending battle of epic proportions taking place here. Gazzola and LaRoche. They have been stellar, stymieing a couple of great chances on both sides. Petman now trying to make something happen against the defender. Leaning into her was Routier. Picked up there by Desel. Now up toward midfield. Garneau works it over the line. With some pace, trying to move it ahead. And it stopped up there, and I still don't know how that ball stayed out, but it did, and that's all that matters if you're Douglas. There was a lot of confusion in there, kind of like a rugby scrum. Couldn't really tell what was going on. At first, I thought the referee had signaled for a corner. Then it seemed like the play was reversed, and the, or the call was reversed, and it was changed to a goal kick. Either way, Douglas comes out unscathed, and a through ball here possibly for the Douglas Royals. Nice work on that far side, and I think they're saying that the ball just went out over the line as the Douglas player thought she might have some open space to work with there, but it is blown down. I think it's actually going to be called a foul. Uh, maybe a little bit of extra contact there from uh, number 24 uh, in white. Petnan. Petnan on the, uh, on the uh, Grenoble defender. Ball movement here, cut out by the Douglas Royals, and then given back to Garneau. Bit of a back and forth affair, for being honest. Just lots of movement. We're seeing Leng La has been switched over to this right hand side, which we saw on the left earlier. Perhaps switching her to the right, like the odds there. And again, we see number nine for Garneau. Who's that? That's uh, Marie Lawrence Marquis. 
Lawrence Marquis taking a tumble on the on the concrete. Every uh, all day I've been saying we just just let the let the ball boys handle it. They're wearing shoes, not cleats, and seen several players take a tumble on that asphalt. Luckily no one's gotten hurt so far as you've seen. Coming away with it now. This is Dalewar. She lost control. Gurno will take it over. <clears throat> Lead ball there, taken smartly off the foot of Genois. And Douglas will clear it away for the Royals. Looks that like went a up. handball. I think that was Pettenden. Or maybe it was a push from behind. I thought it was going to be a handball on Pettenden. Maybe a push from behind against Garneau. And that's going to result in a free kick here. Sam Kell sending the troops up to get an 18-yard box as she bombs this one forward. Kel, oh, I thought she was going to bomb it forward. Goes short, chips it over to that far side. Now they'll try to work it in. Waiting for it was Wessa. Couldn't get it to her. Wessa battles for it, though. Keeps on going. This is Kel once again. Gets it right back. Good work here by Kel. Turns and fires that ball down the field. They'll try to run to it. Couple of players heading toward the middle of the box. Can they get it there? Curling in was number 11, Dollywar. She was the closest to the front of the goal, but it just got a little too deep, and they couldn't get it to her. Hamilton really making a strong run down that right-hand side. Looks like there'll be a substitute. Number eight, I believe, coming in. The Petman up top. Number eight for the Douglas Royals. That'll be... For catch. That's Furkic. For catch. Samantha for catch. Furkic, rather. Uh, coming in up top for the Douglas Royals. So Pettin out, Furkic in. So a little different look for the Douglas Royals here. Up ahead there, taken by Hamilton. She couldn't control it cleanly. She tries to spin and move it forward. Chips it over. Langwa tried to get there, but it's the Royals who control Sonali Dalawar tried to make a move. Douglas now will control once again and the play whistled down as Wedek tried to reach for the ball. <coughs> like, uh, Sam Cal saying that she was already in the act of, of shooting, so to speak, when the opponent ran into her. She'll get called for the foul one way or another and it looks like 16 will be sacrificed for 10 for John No. So Genois heading to the bench to bring on Judy Gagnon. Judy Gagnon for Garneau here. Another like-for-like -like swap. This one also in the offensive third. Your en français pronunciation is getting much better. Well, I have an, excel have an excellent tutor here. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm improving by the hour a minute, it would seem. Up over midfield, here comes Garneau. Douglas intercepts. They'll work it up. Tried to make a move there at midfield, did Sam Kell, but she got turned aside, and Garneau will come right back the other way. Working in with it, nice ball through, but it's intercepted. And again now, look at Hamilton, she's making a run. Can Kell get her the ball? Hamilton, through the seam, can she get there? A bad scramble as Hamilton goes down, and LaRoche came out to get in the middle of it all. And what a run by Hamilton. I wasn't sure at first that Kell could get her the ball, but she did. And Hamilton really turned something out of nothing. She went in against three defenders and a goalkeeper, and it will not be for nothing. Earned her, earned her team a uh, valuable free kick here. Sam Kell just, I don't, I don't even think that's a foot or two outside the 18-yard box on the right-hand side. Essentially a short-range cross. And... Douglas beginning to fill the box, so they are keeping four outside, five if you include Kel. Garneau taking no chances, putting as many defenders in there as they can afford, not even pulling, not even leaving their striker up against the high line. Well, a big, big moment here for the Douglas College Royals in this scoreless gold medal semi. Free kick, gently lobbed in, trying to get ahead on it. It's down to the turf, and it's cleared away. It looked like there was a swing and a miss in there. Didn't see a jersey. Only saw a leg with a white sock kind of swing through like a strike and, and not make any contact with the ball. Possibly a big bullet dodged there by Garneau. We march on 
In this second half, 15 minutes have gone by. We are now playing into the 61st minute. And a good challenge from behind as Wessa went up strong to head that ball down. Now it's Langwa as the players come together in some physical play. Langwa raising the arms in the air. All of a sudden, it seemed the intensity meter just got turned up to 11. Yeah, it seemed that uh, after that run from Hamilton and the free kick, it's really gotten, I, I wouldn't say chippy, but very uh, energetic. That's a good word to say out there. Lots of emotions flaring, I think. The <coughs> reality of this game sinking in that there's a gold medal on the line, arguably, and, and, and no one has been able to crack the net so far. Wessa goes back there for Gill. Gill slides it over to that far side. Let's start to work it back toward the middle. Stopping there was Samra. Throw in now for Garneau. Kel sliding, trying to push that ball ahead. Uncharacteristic uh, touch there from Malo. Eve Malo is not quite getting the contact on it she wants. That'll be a wasted throw by Garneau. Douglas really growing in this second half, having more influence in the attacking third. A lot of it due to the productivity of Sam Kell and uh, Michaela Hamilton. Hamilton particularly just running tirelessly at this Garneau back line. Ball up into the air. Douglas controls it to the ground. And the Garneau player looked to get tripped up over there. A foul will be called. Not sure who it went against, but uh, no need to produce a card. I think it was just a late challenge. And another substitution coming in. 20 cutting out for uh, 14 on the Garneau side. So that's the A heading off for Jeru Anta. And uh, it will be Maribel Jeru Arita. Oh, Arita. Yes, I'm looking on our... Uh, on our uh, Rosters, the R and the I look to be fused. I guess I'm getting a little tired after three games today. <laughs> Nine hours of soccer. And then a shot crossbar and over the goal. And the Galno fans throw their heads back in disbelief as that ball kind of rocketed off the turf out of nowhere. Gazola going high. I don't think she touched it. And it goes off the crossbar and behind the goal and that close to our first marker. But Galdo once again denied. We were just talking about how Douglas seemed to be growing in influence. Then just right there, Garneau comes up with a big chance. That ball actually went up over the goal and over the fence into the dog park behind our facility here. Some uh, late night dog walkers out there. So Garneau coming close. And the fans wanted it. And the players wanted it. But they don't get it. And we remain nil-nil. Here comes Douglas now. Up with it is Samra. Puts the ball up ahead. Goes on a play on the far side. It'll be a throw in for Douglas. The Royals with Wessa. Moving it up ahead. We'll come back toward Wessa, but it's Garneau who control. That ball just goes beyond Gagnon. Back now, headed away. Royals, nice turn there. Can they work it over into the middle? There's the ball high for the corner, and it just goes out the other side. Hamilton was hoping there'd be somebody lingering on the back right, or back left post, rather, to put a head on that. Chance will have to go wanting. Possible missed opportunity there for the Douglas Royals. Ball sent up long. Trying to get in on it there was Wedig. But it's Galneau who control. Moving up is Metevier. Little chip ahead there. Galneau returns the favor, but it's turned aside. Back the other way is Daliwar. Daliwar has looked good here. Tried to lead Hamilton down the field, but too far for her. Even with the speed of Hamilton, she couldn't catch up to that lead ball. That's, that's the, you know, one of those things that we were talking about earlier, weighting balls, making sure you have the proper weight on a ball. You know, that was a 45-yard ball, that, or a, a, a 
20 yard ball, 15 yard ball played with the weight of a 40 yard ball. And even with the engine that Hamilton has, sometimes it's just not enough. <coughs> Quick throw in. Turning is Marquis. Comes down onto the foot of Wedding for Douglas. Turning with it there was Wessa. They'll work it back now and try to regroup. Some good work there. Ball up ahead. Dolly Wire right there goes beyond her, but now a chance for a, bre a breach, perhaps. An excellent dummy there by the striker for, or the winger for Douglas. Realized the wing back was coming on hard. Just let the ball run through her legs and onto her teammate running behind her. No defense. Garneau looked to get it ahead, but it was Sabra who stepped into it and cleared it away. And that will roll by everybody and go to Gazzola. Alexa Gazzola. One half of this dynamic goaltending duel that we've seen this evening. And Marie LaRoche. Her counterpart at the other end for Gardeau. Game slowing a little bit after that big burst of action a couple minutes ago. Kind of like a lull in the storm. Got no chipping this one long. Yep, tried to lob it ahead there. Now they'll pick it up and try to use the speed on the ground to work it forward. So far, so good. But it goes out over the end line. It'll be a goal kick. Well, I think they actually may have called it as a corner. It looks like the... Yeah, it is going to be thrown out to the corner flag. Or maybe a free kick. Interesting. Certainly not a goal kick. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Maybe there was a foul that we just didn't see. It didn't look like there was any contact on the run. No, it, it just kind of appeared that the play broke down and that Garneau had kicked the ball toward goal and it went out over the end line. But in behind, the referee did have his arm up and I guess he's signaling a foul. So... We saw a free kick from the similar position at the other end for the Douglas Royals, but now it's the Sejep Garneau Elan who have a very, very dangerous chance here. Douglas with the wall in place. Gazzola is set. And here comes that free kick low along the ground, right into the wall. Rebound chance there, and the second opportunity sent it long. But it bounces right into the arms of Gazzola. And she has no problem taking that and sending it right down the field. Well, the walls have held well tonight. Haven't seen too many free kicks get by for either of these teams. Here comes Garneau again. Making a run to the middle was Bluin. Couldn't quite get it to her. And again, Gazzola, like a vacuum cleaner out there, gathering up anything that comes within a yard or two of her. Douglas back the other way now. Douglas may be able to put some uh, pressure on Garneau here. They've got the ball in a good position for the throw. Committed some numbers forward. Pressure starting to, I'd say, build for these two teams. Just 20 minutes to go in regulation. And after that, we'll have to head to the spots. Ball thrown in down to the corner. Close quarters down there. Ball cleared down. Getting there first is Gill. And Gill will go back to Gazzola, who immediately boots it down the field. Routier has it taken away. Good job there by Hamilton. Tries to roll it through. And nobody home that could run onto it for Douglas. And LaRoche will just gather it up and reset things now for the Gardeau Elan. Garneau keeper coming out of the box there. Why Why not? If you've got the sweeper keeper abilities, by all means, press the ball further up the pitch. Getting close to a full 70 minutes having been played. So one officially about 20 minutes of clock time left. And that's not a lot. And Both of these teams have kind of settled in. To a back and forth pattern here. 
Well, it's one of those things where you typically grow more comfortable in a game. But here, it's I feel like t both teams would, you know, grow more comfortable, but then also grow more anxious because, you know, I think both of them would rather get a goal during the run of play than have to go down into the 50-50 it's not 50-50, but the, the chance of a, a PK shootout. We saw in the one that occurred already this this week that they are chancy, chancy events at best. And I think if a team could settle the, uh, the score on the field without going to the penalty spots, they would. Here's a ball forward now. Hamilton trying to get there desperately. Look at Hamilton go. Just turning on the Jets and DeSalle just had to clear it away, but Hamilton... Had a nose for that ball. Tried to get their great effort. Douglas with the throw in. Little head flick over. Excellent dribbling there. Dolly Wart. Yes. Comes back out. Taken off the chest of Wedding. Nice job to keep it in there at the line. Garneau now will turn and send it upfield. Almost had Gagnon into some open space. Garneau will settle it over there. This is Jarrou Leplant. Far side now. Making a run. Into some Douglas space. Garneau. Gets it off for Jarrou Arita. Checked into the game recently in the second half. Marquis tried to put a shot through. Dollywar has it go off her head and it'll go out of play for a Garneau throw in. Back it comes to Marquis. Dollywar watching her closely. They'll go back to the keeper, Laroche. Garneau putting it forward. Up ahead there with Gagnon. Tried to feed it to her and that's a hand ball. Yeah, the no, not even contesting that one. Just went straight back. You know, didn't, didn't try to play it off smooth. Just started to head back on defense. <laughs> Unlucky bounce there. I don't think there was any intent. Uh, arms just went out for bounce. And, uh, an odd bounce off the ball. Catches around the elbow. Well, time now. Certainly becoming more of a factor as we are less than 20 on the game clock. And except for uh, a couple of Free kicks that were awarded close to the 18-yard box. Not really a whole lot of offense to talk about here. It's kind of been locked down defense, and as I said, both teams almost have settled into a pattern of back and forth. Yeah, except for that, that early chance that uh, Garneau had that, that kind of went off the crossbar. It's been pretty stagnant here. It looks like there'll be a foul called against Garneau. Sam Kell already... Uh, Already setting herself up for this free kick. It might be a little too far to drill with power. Uh, we know she has a strong leg. Uh, definitely she's uh, capable of placing it. We'll just have to see what she comes up with here. Also, we've seen before that they have the option to play it short. We've seen that flag route come out on the right-hand side if that were the case. Well, this is a deceiving distance. Kel, that could be tricky, and LaRoche. Had a bead on it. Nobody could get there to put a head to it. And LaRoche had an eye on that ball the whole way. And she'll send her mates right back up the other end of the field. <clears throat> we remain nil-nil. St. Lambert Cavaliers waiting for an opponent in the gold medal game. Who will it be? Hamilton was off to the races there, but will get flagged offside. It's kind of been the game plan for Douglas so far in the first and second half, trying to get a through ball to Hamilton, or you know some tricky play with uh, with Kell and the other midfielders to kind of get service. Garneau has been trying to do a little bit more tactical, more you know movement in the midfield, swinging it across the back line in midfield to try and expose more space, but really hasn't been to much avail. A couple decent chances have come their way, but nothing consistent. And here's a chance now. Look at Garneau. Can they make something happen here? It's Langwad with the right foot off the side of the goal again. And Langwad down to her knees. A great effort. But couldn't get the angle toward goal. But indeed, a great chance there by Langwad. It's the second time that we've seen the twine ripple on that inside 
or the outside of that uh, that far left corner of the net. Good attack coming from the left-hand side for Garneau. Just haven't been able to square it up to the frame of the goal. Here they come again. Can they get a little energy now off that last run by Lang Wan? Nice move here. Couldn't get the shot away from distance. Good defense from behind. And it's back out toward midfield. Marquis goes back over there for Routier. They'll just play catch on that back line for a minute there. Douglas blocks it down at the line. Tried to get it forward for Hamilton. Nothing doing there. And it'll go out of play as we now are into the 76th minute. Ball just kind of pinging around the midfield. No one really doing whole lot, nothing at least consistent with it all. Through ball there, almost making two for Garneau. That was Gagnon, who almost got sprung free. Wearing my favorite number, number 10. I think that's a lot of people's favorite number. <laughs> my, well, my favorite athlete when I was a kid growing up was the dynamic right winger for the Montreal Canadiens, Guy Lafleur. Wore numero 10. So anytime I see number 10 in any sport, actually, I I think of uh, Guy Lafleur. Well, it used to be, you know, the most popular uh, number in all of soccer, and then this 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 Portuguese fellow named Ronaldo came along and played ah, yes. apparently seven. It's supposed to be pretty good. Where's seven? Plays for some uh, some team in Spain. It's supposed to be all right at the the beautiful game. Not near as good as Messi, though. Oh. <laughs> and, and so it begins. <laughs> Looks like there'll be a, a clip there on uh, number four for the Douglas Douglas uh, <coughs> Royals there, sorry. And that's uh, just checking the roster. Sambria. So a free kick right from that midfield stripe. Headed forward. Nice job there to get that header toward the goal. Douglas tries to race onto it. Garneau covering up on the back end. Good 1v1 battle down there right along the line. Dollywar tried to put it toward the goal. Dollywar fighting for it, gets knocked down. This is Kel. I think Garneau just content to clear the lines at this point after a extended possession by Douglas. They're going to try and get the through ball. No, to no avail. The through ball hasn't really been working for them, and I don't think it's really their game. They're much more tactical in the short passes using those triangles in the midfield. Small passes, the tiki-taka style of Spanish football that we've seen popularized recently. It's kind of what this team was built around. Not quite as good at the long balls. Bleuet tried to put that ball in. The referee was uh, considering playing advantage. I think 21 coming in for 18. Man, that board is getting harder and harder to see by the minute. But a change by Garneau. And it is Alexandra Isabel into the game, and Frederic Lequetier is out. So, Alexandra Isabel, first-year player out of Boucherville, Quebec, getting to see some action here. And they, what a time to come into the game. Nil-nil score in a gold medal semifinal with uh, just a little less than 12 minutes left on the clock. Drew the point standing over this free kick now, about 10 yards outside the 18-yard box. Looking like she's going to try and whip that in with the left foot. Try and get ahead on it for one of her teammates. There it is, angle toward the corner, and just goes off to the side. Gazzola had a good look at it the whole way in. I think she may have made her mind up before she ever hit that that she was going to go on her own from that distance. Nothing wrong with that. It was a tough angle, I'd say, and uh, for a left foot, she gave it a uh, Quite a good effort. As we see Gazzola put this ball into play. Here's Mello being chased down there by Sam Kell. Mello will go over to the far side for Jarou Le Point. She lifts it up there. Comes back down toward midfield and Garneau will control here. Marquis up ahead. Nice spin move there as Isabel took it and tried to make something happen. That's a really hard thing to do. When the ball's moving that fast, just be able to rake it with the bottom of your cleats and open up. 
incredibly difficult. A lot of skill there showed by the player from Garnell. And as we get to the 81st minute, getting even closer to potential penalty kicks, you almost have to wonder. You were mentioning what happened in the ACAA playoffs where they, I think you said a 15 or 16 round. 13. 13. The way these two keepers have been playing, if we get to penalty kicks, we might be here all night. That's true. And it was... Uh, I had never I'd heard the urban legend, you know, of the keepers who actually have to take the penalties because they go 11 deep. Uh, but watching it happen was truly something, something special. I don't think either team on the field would really, you know, opt for that. But uh, we're about 10 minutes away from seeing what the result would be. Very well could have to head to the penalty spot. Well, certainly now every move, every touch every flick every kick takes on even greater importance you have to believe that we're in that point of the game should one of these teams be able to tally a goal here that that might be enough to stand up absolutely I mean at this point late in the game a, a, a goal either conceding or scoring can you know destroy or, or strengthen your your you know determination and grit that being said, it, it, I don't think any of one of these defenses is going to be in any mood to concede. Let me see Douglas opening up some space here. Kell got it over to the far side, but a nice job there by Garneau defensively, and it's Langlois aggressively getting that ball, winning it, and then turning it upfield. Here's Bluin into the middle. Feeds that little ball through. Cheesy little chip there, and they score! And Gazola can't believe it. She watched the ball go into the goal, and now she walks off to the side, and she very frustratedly kicks that ball out toward the center dot. And the players on Douglas can't believe it. They've got their hands on their heads. They're in disbelief at this time as the ball went in, and I believe it might have been Alexander to Isabel who first directed it toward the goal. The sub, who just came in recently, I didn't see who put it in behind Gazzola, but when the ball went into the back of the net, Gazzola almost in disbelief put her hands up towards her head. But now, just after talking about how a goal could be all it takes, barely were the words out of our mouth, and it's Galno who scored. The opening goal, and it's now 1-0 with just about seven minutes left on the clock. An excellent finish. I believe it was number 10 from Garneau. Don't hold me to that. But the substitute substitute striker came in. I'm going to ask you to help me with that pronunciation. So it was Alexander to Isabel who came in, but then it was Judy Gagnon, Gagnon, who you think may have been the player who deposited it in behind a very distraught Gazzola after that ball went in, and she... Went for a little walk to the side of her goal. I mean, she has played spectacularly well. And she went for that ball, seemed to be unsure at first. And when she looked behind her and saw it in the corner of her net, she was just beyond consoling. Well, I looked at, uh, you know, all the Douglas players when it went in. Because, of course, the, the Garneau players are, are hugging and celebrating. And there was a moment where, yes, the shoulders drop, the heads are lowered. The hands are on the knees or, or, the, or covering the face, you know, that, that moment of despair. And then they grab the ball and they put it back on the center dot and they buckle down ready to play. This game is not over. There's at least six more minutes to go. And one goal away from going back to penalty kicks if the Douglas Royals can get a, uh, an offensive possession here. Well, they'll keep pushing for sure. There's no doubt about it. But having played so tight for so long, and to know, you know that they knew how much time was left. They know that they were getting close to penalty kicks. And to see that ball go to the back of the goal again, it's just human nature. They did have that kind of moment where collectively where they were just kind of in disbelief. But absolutely, they re-racked. And they've got time. But they are going to have to make it happen. And they are going to have to go all out and get all hands on deck. And as I say that, we've got to... Injured well, Douglas know, player over on the far side. One player hitting the deck, and the uh, trend is going to come over immediately. Garneau immediately also heads their dugout for a timeout. It looks like Douglas is going to do the same. 
Goalkeeper so Gazola still a little bit distraught after letting that in. A lot of emotions on the line here. Yeah, Gazola, and I mean, you can't blame her. She's played just a stellar, stellar goal for Douglas here. And again, just she goes over to check on her teammate. But when that ball went in and she, it was almost as if she were a little unsure when the ball was first struck and she kind of went to try and reach it. And then when she, I think she was actually hoping that it was going to go wide of that far post. And when she turned and saw that it did actually find the back of the goal for Garneau, she was, uh, you know, understandably upset. And uh, she's shaking it off now. And obviously now showing a little more concern for her teammate who remains down over on that far sideline. And we, we don't have a number on the player, but we certainly hope that uh, they're going to be okay. A lot of subs about to check in now for uh, Douglas. I think they're calling in the uh, call, calling in the cavalry here to get them some, you know, up top presence. I mean, all, all the chips are down at this point. You know, goal difference does not matter. You know, it, it, Douglas needs a goal, and you know, obviously they can't concede the second one here. But at this point, they have to get a goal if they want to keep their gold medal hopes alive. So. If Two strikers, I think, or at least two uh, strikers are attacking midfielders, checking in. We're seeing that uh, they're shifting more to a, a three at the back setting with four midfielders and then three strikers or forwards in the areas. You can call them wingers or strikers. Your choice. So good to see the Douglas player up to her feet, although, again, never want to speculate, and we won't, but based on what we're seeing here, they're being very cautious with the, again, we don't have the player's number, so I apologize, we can't give that to you to see who it is, but. Four, it looks like. So that would be Nisha Samra. So being very cautiously moved away from the sideline. Although she's sitting on the sideline now like she's waiting to come back in, which is, I'd be surprised. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention when they put up the board to see which numbers were coming in the substitute. She may have actually been subbed. Not sure. Let's take a quick count. And no, she she has been subbed out. Douglas playing with a full 10 men on the proper field plus the goalkeeper. So right around two and a half minutes on the clock. Obviously, there'll be a lot of stoppage time. Some more was down for the better part of, I'd say, three or four minutes. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with four minutes of added time. That is my prediction. Little game I like to play anytime I watch soccer at any level. And it looks like another change coming in here. Now I suspect this will be more defensive minded. Fifteen coming in for eleven for Garno. So that'll be Norbert coming in Maxime for Norbert, yep. for a for a Daphne Bluen. Bluen, take a seat on the bench after a hard. Evening's worth of soccer work. So down go. Playing very tight football with this Douglas College Royals team for just about 84 minutes. They got the only goal of the game so far. And they lead 1-0. They are that close to a... Quebec Conference rematch and an all-Quebec national final on Saturday. But Douglas still has work to do. They've got to push that ball forward. We'll keep an eye on the official over on the side to see how much added time there is. Good 1v1 battle over there trying to get it. Garneau might uh, delay this a little bit. Another sub coming from Garneau. This will be... Ooh. Can I have to ask you to help me out on that one as well? Zoe Lavagur. Another girl coming in, and I, for, and I missed a... Oh, and it'll be uh, Giroud Lapointe who will take a seat on the bench now. So Zoe Lavagur into the game. Lots of fresh faces out there for Galdo right now. Not that I'm going to say this is happening, but substitutions are notoriously uh, are a notoriously good method for, for time-wasting. And uh, Garneau only needing to survive just a couple more minutes here to punch their ticket to a gold medal match. Well, we've got 20 seconds left on the field clock, and we will cast our gaze to the far sideline to see how much added time will be put on, and there certainly will be. It's just a matter of how much extra time Douglas will have to equalize 
Douglas trying to get that ball forward, but of course Garneau, and it's five minutes put on, so. Plenty. You could make a dish of instant minute rice, or you could watch the rest of this game in the five minutes. So that's a good chunk of time right there for Douglas. So five minutes of added time. Five minutes separating Douglas from an equalizer in penalty kicks. Five minutes separating Garneau from a trip to Saturday's gold medal final against their provincial rivals from St. Lambert. Garneau taking all the time they need with this free kick. Mallow. Just going to ping it out to that far corner, although a good interception there by the Douglas defender. And just due to the, the nature of this game, I've actually started a stopwatch here on my handy-dandy iPhone just to keep an eye on exactly what the, what the stoppages will look like. We're already coming up on right around 45 seconds. I started mine a little bit late. So Garneau just want to keep that ball away from their end and keep attacking. Douglas can't score if they're defending, and that's kind of the thought here for Garneau. We are in five minutes of added time. Approximately one minute has come off of that. Any time that we give you now, of course, will be very unofficial. I mean, it'll be official from my iPhone. I, can, I consider that to be a very... <laughs> No good authority. That ball sent down. They'll get another one in quickly. Gazzola will want to get this ball in play. And she's going to want to get this down there as far as she can. Gazzola puts everything into that. Malo was there. Malo reaches for the eye. I think she took some contact up around her head, but she looks to be okay. Long throw forward. Garneau just clears it away. That's Jeru Arita. Working it down now. That goes off the top of the head there of Gill. Moved up ahead and Garneau sent it right back down. Gazzola comes out. That ball toward the goal. Just wide as there was number 10 again. Judy Gagnon. That would have been the nail in the coffin. I thought when she hit it, it would have been on frame. Just couldn't quite get it squared up to the net. Goes just a little bit right, and that'll be a push in the back from number 14 on the Douglas roster. Wessa, and uh, another free kick awarded here to Garneau. We're looking at two and a half minutes according to my phone. And Mello, she can put an on goal from there, but again, she just chips it out to the left. Wessa heads it forward. Douglas has to get the ball over to the other side of the pitch. And this is what they want. Douglas Hamilton bearing down on the defense. Hamilton's dangerous, but she goes past it, and Garneau do a good job of turning it back the other way. Now the referee having to move the throw back. Can't blame him for taking an extra yard or two, considering the circumstances. Coach Vincent Cornoyer and his Garneau Elan. Oh, so close to an all Quebec gold medal final. These representatives from British Columbia trying desperately to get something toward the goal here and equalize. Oh, my goodness. That just happened. So there was a foul uh, from. A Garneau player on Hamilton, called by the referee, and Hamilton seemed to have retaliated in some form or fashion. The Garneau player went down in what appeared to be uh, quite a painful uh, way, and the Garneau, or and uh, I'm sorry, Hamilton has received a straight red card and has been dismissed from the playing surface. She's on her way back to the the locker room now. That. Uh, little speechless, uh, you know that that's. If, if you want to make any move right now, giving up a red card and going a man down with, you know, just under a couple minutes, you know, just a couple minutes to go left in this one, everyone is up for Douglas, goalkeeper and all. The, the net is uncontested. I, I I take that back. There's one defender sitting around midfield, but uh, well, certainly not what we've seen throughout this tournament. We've been actually talking about 
the great sportsmanship that we've seen on display here and the fact that the officials have not really had to uh, inject themselves into the game. But Hamilton out with the red card. Now it's right down in front of the goal and LaRoche covers up. And as you said, the Garno goal, or excuse me, the Douglas goal empty, but it will be all for naught. Down to the turf goes Gazzola. She is distraught. But the Garno Elan out of Quebec will play in Saturday's gold medal final. And who will they play? Well, James, it'll be their provincial rivals, St. Lambert Cavaliers. So it's an all Quebecois matchup on Saturday. And it's a rematch of the Quebec Conference playoffs. And it should be a dandy. You got to feel for Douglas. They did all they could. They gave it the best effort possible. An outstanding goaltending performance by Alexa Gazzola. She is probably the most distraught player on the field. She's still down. Obviously very upset by what has transpired here. But she's got to be proud of the effort that Douglas put forward in this game, in this tournament. And certainly Gazzola played an outstanding goal. But for the Sejep Garneau Elan, their goaltender Anne-Marie Laroche gets the clean sheet. And her team will find themselves in Saturday's gold medal final. Just a great game here. Unfortunate situation with what happened with Michaela Hamilton at the end. And it looks like there's a Garneau player down still injured. Uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe he was on the last play there. She's been down for a while. The training staff have come out. Um, so even after the game, still bodies on the uh, on the ground. Good to see the Douglas, Douglas players coming over, get her a, give her a pat on the back and wish her congratulations on a good game. We don't have a number on that player right now, but uh, just a testament to what these ladies put on the line today, all for a chance to go to that gold medal match this weekend. Um, really laid it all and left it all on the field. Well, just a great gold medal semifinal put on here by the Douglas College Royals from British Columbia and the Sejep Garneau Elan from Quebec. And when it was all said and done, it was that goal late in the 83rd minute. I believe it was Judy Gagnon who got credit for it. It was the play started by Alexandre Isabel and Gagnon, two substitutions who came on and they were the difference. <laughs> 